do, do you know why well, some carnivores can't handle rendered fat? It's just a go- gallbladder issue that resolves over time. It usually is. It usually is. It seems to be the problem primarily. Where I I've never had a problem with rendered fat um, of any sort, you know. So whether it's, you know, because dripping is another form as well. I've, you know, I can do rendered, you know, the, the different types of tallow, um, dripping um, all the way to, you know, all the other different stuff and even the dairy stuff that is, that's rendered or slightly refined or whatever. So no, I, I think it's, I used to, and, and it pretty much is, I would, I did have gallbladder issues then, you know, so now I've just have a bit of sludge that comes out now and then it sort of hasn't completely cleared out. Occasionally I just get a few issues, but um, at least my, I'm secreting bile in the proper way. It's just a sludge in the ducts is coming out slower. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, unfortunately, some people have that issue, some people don't. I've got very little now. I, I used to have a lot of horrendous issues where my feces would be just um, brown, um, light brown, you know, that I'd get that a couple of times a month. Now I may get it once every a bit, very little, six months, seven months, you know, it, it, it just happens out of the blue. So I think there's some is stuck in some of the bile ducts or it may be still in the gallbladder and hasn't, you know, the stones have gone, but this stuff is still there, hasn't really cleared out properly. So yes. It varies between people, unfortunately, so it can take a bit longer. Um, and that's only a couple of years now. And it usually, you know, can take up to seven, five, seven years, you know, it depends. So it can be a problem for people. This is what happens when you basically create a dysfunctional gallbladder, when you don't get enough taurine to emulsify, and then you basically create gallbladder issues. It's they're endemic now with the low fat um, uh, type, with the high seventy percent kibble diets that we most people on a sad diet have today. That's why gallbladder issues are endemic. Where before, when we had two thirds animal foods, one third plants, they were very rare, and now it's the complete opposite. They're endemic. So, I think that actually fulfills the Bradford Hill criteria very tightly in terms of dose dependency, in that regard. But obviously, there's no research. You can't put people in labs and feed them for a, the whole life a certain diet and others to see what happens to their gallbladder. So we've only got um, observational studies of populations, but with strong odds ratios. So that's one thing going for us. Like with tobacco, higher odds ratios tend to basically signify that the inference is much higher. So, and it does fulfill the Bradford Hill criteria very tightly on many, many of those areas. So I'd, su- I'd suspect that is, you know, because when you know that you need menaquinone 4, which is the animal form of vitamin K2 to actually produce bile and you need taurine to, for the emulsification. So it actually is in the right consistency. It actually tells you a lot about you know, that you need animal foods to basically produce proper bile and function properly. So that sort of is a giveaway. You know, it's sort of, you know, you need these nutrients to produce that. You know, if you don't have those nutrients, you can't produce that. But most people, you know, the traditional, you know, vagoons and stuff like that, oh, the body produces enough taurine, biosynthesizes enough taurine, and um, from the vegetables, um, vitamin K1 can be converted to K2, to metoquinone 4 in the liver. That's what they will tell you and all that. But the reality, or that the bacteria can also do it from vitamin K1. Yes, they can. But the difference is, in the old days, we had a better microbiome before glyphosate. We don't have a lot of those bacteria that do that production because they've been annihilated by glyphosate. One. Second, our livers are very poor converters of K1 to to menoquinone 4. That's the other thing. And people have varied levels. So you've got all these things plus deficiency in the diet. Yeah, obviously. But, you know, they'll always come up with these friggin' excuses. So what's bloody new with the vagoons? 